which is 1092 watts of power for one minute without any issues or degradation happening to the ESC. Now, this is pretty insane. Now, if you wanted to see this on a 6S, how many amps that would mean for one minute? Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new ESC from Holly Brown. This is called the Holly Brown Tico 32 F3 Metal ESC. Now, as the name states, we have the word metal and F3. F3 means it's using an F3 microcontroller unit, which is a hell of a lot faster and can run up to D shot 4800. However, the software side is still not ready, but they are running a lot more efficient than the Cortex M0s. So that is something great right out of the box. And what's so cool about the F3 microcontroller units, you can get away with using less capacitors and less components, as well as increasing efficiency and power delivery. Now, if you take a look here, we have an RGB LED. So if you're in RGB LEDs, they have that right there for you. And if we take a look here, this is the FET driver. And if we take a look here, we have a low resistance shunt resistor, which are really great to have in ESCs because this will increase the power delivery also increase efficiency and as well as current draw so that is something really nice to see they are going absolutely premium with this esc here now if you take a look at the mosfets they look pretty unique here and this is this is where the name metal comes from because it is using metal encased mosfets which have better heat dissipation i guess 96 watts at 25 degrees celsius which is something you kind of want to see here and that is why it's able to withdraw and handle a lot more current than any other esc in the market and another thing that's really crazy about this is the size it's not as big as you might think it is actually as you could tell here it's not much bigger than normal ESC. it's actually even slightly smaller it's just a little bit wider than most ESCs, just a tiny bit so to have all this in one package in this size is just absolutely remarkable here filtration looks somewhat minimal and again this is using an f3 microcontroller unit which means we can get away with using less capacitors so we have 12 ceramic capacitors on the back the f3 microcontroller unit and the voltage regulator and the other circuits too in order to have this all function correctly now let's talk about the FETs here. Now the FETs are theoretically rated for 3,300 watts, which is quite a lot, which is around 330 amps at 10 volts. And if we were to calculate that, so we can say, all right, so let's calculate the 3,300 watts here. So 3,300, and we're gonna say at a 4S LiPo, we're gonna see this is capable of around 200 amps if you keep the temperature down. Now this is a theoretical rating, this could handle that amount of current if you keep the temperature below 150 degrees Celsius. More likely, more keep it less than 140 degrees Celsius, actually, I would say. And if we also take a look at the Holly Bros test that they made, which is giving me inspiration to actually start making my own test in such a fashion, which they've tested this at a 4S, pulling 65 amps with nothing covering it for one minute, and it survived just fine. So we can calculate the, the, the watts here, which is 4S, which we say 16.8, times 65 amps which is 1092 watts of power for one minute without any issues or degradation happening to the esc now, this is pretty insane now if you wanted to see this on a 6s how many amps that would mean for one minute what we have to do is get 6s voltage and divide it by the 1092 watts here so we have 1092 watts and we're going to go ahead and divide it by 6s voltage which is 25.2 and that is not division Okay, divided by 25.2, and that is 43 amps for one minute without anything covering it. However, it is highly and actually a must to add the low ESR, ESR capacitor if you will be using a 6S setup. And again, this is, goes and applies to every single ESC in the market. If you are planning on using a 6S setup, please add a low ESR capacitor of some sort. And out of the box, they do provide you with capacitors. I don't know what brand this is, but they're 35 volt, 220 microfarads. I'll be testing them soon. And uh, let's talk about stress testing here. So they're saying that, as we just saw, it can handle 1,092 watts of power for up to a minute with just the air coming down to cool it down from the propeller, which is pretty interesting here. And um, I will start doing such a test. I don't know why it just never occurred to me. So we'll be doing stress testing on these and actually see if this does perform as it's stating. And also what you can do is we could even increase, if what they said is correct, we could increase this thing's performance quite dramatically with a heatsink. If we added an external heatsink here, this thing will perform 
absolutely phenomenal if they're stating that it runs the way it runs and i am very excited to test this and i will do also do the 6s stress test as well as the 4s stress test and i do have a power supply to give us that constant voltage and current so we don't have voltage sag, so we can have it as consistent as possible. And uh, that's going to make for a pretty interesting video. And expect that to come up this week, uh, possibly during Christmas if I have some time. So what else do we have here? Uh, we also have a telemetry pad, ground pad, and a signal pad, as well as obviously the power pads and the motor pads here. And the copper looks really great using two ounce copper. And um, just the overall build quality is absolutely spectacular. And these are German made MOSFETs. Now, if we talk a little bit more about the FETs here, these have, again, like an inbuilt cooling system and they're actually slightly lifted. It's gonna be very difficult to see it on camera, but they are lifted also up off the board slightly to allow better cooling on both sides and the heat dissipation on these fets is quite remarkable compared to anything else and um you know just to explain to you you might say oh this freaking expensive 25 dollars if you go and check the price of the fets and just the microcontroller unit that right there is around 24 bucks so this is you know low resistance uh shunt resistor you got six sick ass mosfets you got your capacitors f3 rgb led you got the whole pcb here the capacitors, the LED driver, you got the voltage regulator, and all the other little resistors and capacitors for $25 is remarkable. It is really good. I mean, if this thing was 35 bucks, I would still buy it after the tests that I've been doing on it. Overall, this is a hell of an ESC so far, and I can't wait to do the stress testing on this. So enough talking, let's jump to the testing, and we'll take it from there. Alright guys, so the results are in for the F3 Metal ESC. Now let's take a look at this. Now on the left side here we have the throttle noise level test. We have 10%, 25, 50%, 75, and 100% throttle. Both of these are exactly the same. The bottom one is just a colored version. This gives us a clear representation of the noise at each throttle level. And on the right side here we have simulated aggressive flight maneuver. Both of them are exactly the same. This is just a colored version to give us an idea where the voltage is at most of the time. So Let's compare. Now, obviously, just by looking at it from right now, this is one of the best results as well. This is a really, really good result. And uh, let's bring in the best ESC I've ever tested, and we just start comparing them together, which was the Tico 32, actually. So let's bring in the colored version, actually. Uh, this was the Tico 32, uh, the older version, which is still pretty good. However, let's talk a little bit before getting into this. Now, the new metal ESCs are going to be able to run a lot better and more compatible with lower KV motors and A6S setup. Now, the Tico 32, the previous Tico 32 had issues with, we could say kind of low mid-range KV on a 6S setup, stuff like over 800 KV, uh, not 800, 1,800 KV, it would have some issues. And some other Beale Holly 32 ESCs with the Cortex M0 microcontroller units also had that issue. With the F3, you're not going to have that issue, which is a huge step up and is something really good to have. So right out of the box, if you're looking for low KV 6S setups, you're going to have to, or you should definitely go to the F3 Metal Tico 32 ESC here. Now, let's start comparing it. Now, on the top now, again, we have the older Tico 32, and on the bottom, we have the metal one. And uh, as you can tell on the throttle noise level test, the throttle, the Tico 32 did better. 
And uh, but if you take a look at the FPV video noise, it's 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 just it's like basically they're about equal here. Uh, but obviously, Tiggo 30 do, does have more filtration, a lot more filtration, and this is quite remarkable for the amount of filtration added uh, on the PCB with the F3 microcontroller unit to run this. So looking at this, 75% throttle is usually the most noisiest on all ESCs. However, looking at the metal here. We do have a very low probability to mid-throttle oscillations due to electrical noise here. Now, if we take a look at the right side, the simulator aggressive flight maneuvers, this is actually quite remarkable. They're basically neck and neck here. Um, it's just, this is a really great result. This is what you want to see, and this is... Um, this is a good result, guys. I mean, I, I can't say anything else other than it's good. And we just have to start comparing it to something else. Now, and again, the, the metal ESC on paper, and just the FETs on it, the overall build quality, and the components used on it are absolutely out of this world. It's basically like out of this planet. Aliens made that ESC. It's just, it's just absolutely gorgeous here. Now, let's start bringing in something else to test. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the latest and greatest from T-Motor, which is a T-Motor F45 amp ESC. I don't know if the video came out before this one or is going to come out after this one, but when I tested that one, I didn't have this ESC just yet tested. So let's bring that in and to get an idea of how they're performing against each other here. And let's take a look at this. Now, as you can tell, this is the T-Motor F45 amp is still a pretty good result, but it's using way smaller FETs and um, way weaker FETs than the metal here. And it does have more filtration on the T-Motor F45, yet the metal is beating it. And it's, it's um, I think they're about the same price here. So the, T the Tico 32 metal ESC is still by far uh, one of the best ESCs. I would consider it as, you could consider it now the first best ESC uh, in terms of just the overall package and everything, on the comp all the components that are on it basically. It is one of the best right now. And just wait for the stress testing. That's going to be a really interesting part here. Now, and again, the, the you know, just the Tico 30, this metal ESC is just really good. I don't know what to compare it next to now. Um, let's bring in, I don't know, let's just bring in something else here. Should we bring in a 4 one ESC? Let's bring in a 4 one ESC. Let's bring in the Tico 32 4 one ESC and just see the difference here. Here's the Tico 32 4 one ESC throttle. There we go. Let's bring in the colored version. I think it would be better. Here we go. There we go. So it's performing in that perspective, we can say. And if we bring in the noise color, we just there it is. And we can just bring it in. As you can tell that the, the, the metal is obviously better. But if we bring in the Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC with a 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor, then you can kind of get an idea of how well the metal is actually performing. This is the Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC with a low 470 Rubicon uh, low ESR capacitor. And um I think I would say that the metal is performing even slightly better. It just has lower voltage drops here. But again, the power delivery on this is absolutely insane. And um, it's just, yeah, wow. You can just see everything that the motor is doing with the voltage here. Boom, full throttle. And it just goes, the power delivery is just remarkable. And, you know, we don't see any voltage spikes on the metal, which is really nice. Uh, that is just really beautiful. So let's just bring in actually the T-motor back here. So we kind of get a better idea. As you can tell, the the, the, the T-Motor jumped. In. This is still a good result. I'm not saying it's a bad result, but this is a hell of a fucking result, basically. Um, it's just that this ESC is really good. It's really good. Like, really, really good. And I can't wait to do the stress testing. Uh, that's going to be the, the really interesting part. And I think I'm going to start that series as well, stress testing. We'll do the stress testing on a 4 and 6S uh, voltage in, in one video for each ESC. So we'll do a separate video for noise and separate videos for stress testing. And the reason why I can't do two in one because that, that'll take a long time for me to do. So if you're gonna start complaining, uh, you're just gonna have to get you know get used to it. I, I cannot, it's, it's, I need an assistant basically to, to do that. And if you guys can support me, enable me, enable me to get an assistant, I swear to you, I can bring you some crazy ass tests. But yeah, other than that, this ESC is an absolute beast on paper in uh, testing and hopefully the stress testing will be out very soon so we can see how well these perform and I'll also stress test the F3 Slim ESCs from Hollybro those are pretty massive little beasts as well and I'll have a link to them down below if you can check those out those obviously great so support the channel and if you could also support me on Patreon that'll be absolutely phenomenal uh, it'll keep this channel going and well I'm gonna leave it at that guys wait for the stress testing video and it's gonna be a pretty damn interesting uh, video basically and well that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.